or more profoundly disappointed and sad that the government of this enlightened country should in the October of 2008 decide on two things. One was to employ the terrorist legislation which was created to defend against Al-Qaeda and Taliban against Iceland and put my country, the government and the entire system on the, on the official website, the British government website, side by side with uh, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. And the second thing was that Gordon Brown, in October, and Alistair Darling, went on global television, including CNN, and stated that Iceland was a bankrupt country, which was utter nonsense at its best, financial terrorism on their part at its worst. And this meant that companies all over the world who had had dealings with Iceland closed their operation down so the British damaged our economy to a greater extent than otherwise would have been the case. So why not just simply say, you, your banks wouldn't reimburse if it was elsewhere, our banks, everyone knew the risk, were not paying. Good morning. On you go. Well, there are a number of people in my country who are saying exactly that. Why don't you do who that? Who are saying that ordinary people, taxpayers, should not be you're put being, in a position to show them. Yes, but Iceland's being bullied at the moment. Of course we are being bullied, of course. And the, the British and the Dutch are using their influence within the IMF to prevent the IMF program from, from going forward. So we have a situation where a small nation is in fact ready to shoulder part of this burden, but doesn't, don't, doesn't want to be put in a corner where the very survival of its economy in the next 10 years would be uh, at stake. Is there a contradiction between your, your publicly saying that Iceland will stand by its obligation to repay the UK and the Netherlands and the mechanisms by which it should be done? If you're going to repay... Get on and repay. Well, there is a general will in Iceland <clears throat> that we should repay. But the question is, on what terms and how much? And may I remind you that if you take the sum that the Icelandic taxpayers are asked to shoulder and you transform form it into the British economic system to get the relative size, this is equal to the British taxpayers being asked to pay £700 billion pounds for the years and decades to come, simply because one British bank failed in two foreign countries. When you took the decision to, uh, not to, to, well, to veto the bill, was it a difficult decision to take? Did you spend a long time thinking about it before deciding, no, you weren't going to let it go through? Yes, I did. It was perhaps the most difficult decision I have ever had to take. Because one thinks of people, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, no. Uh, as, as presidents and heads of states, very often we are told, yes, they have the power to do something, but it is a power in name only. You know, they, uh, they, they rubber stamp, they, do, they sign the act. A quarter of the electorate signed the petition that they wanted this right in their hands. And may I also say, when people say, yes, presidents are there just to rubber stamp, that in previous 20 or 30 years, we have had a system in the Western world where the markets, the financial markets, were paramount, and somehow <clears throat> the democratic elements of our societies were put aside. We have forgotten <clears throat> that there are two pillars of the Western heritage that we are proud of. One is the evolution of the free market, but the second is the evolution of democracy. And what I did was when I was faced with a decision between the financial concerns on one hand and democracy on the other, I decided to go with democracy.